Hello students, welcome to lecture series of automobile engineering and today we will discuss about the subject of automobile engines. Today in this video we will discuss about the cooling systems. Okay, so let's see first introduction. So almost all the cars currently use is what is called a four stroke combustion cycle to convert gasoline into the motion, right? So modern automotive internal combustion engines generates a huge amount of heat. Okay, so it has been stated that the typical average sized vehicle can generate enough heat to keep a five room house comfortably warm during the zero degree weather. So you can imagine how much it is there. Okay, so the necessity to having a good engine cooling systems are this follows. So an engine cooling system is a system that controls the engine temperature. Okay, so it is known as a cooling system. So it is controlling the engine temperature. So the cooling system is provided in an IC engine for the main reasons. So if these are these reasons, first reason is the temperature of the burning gas in the engine cylinder reaches up to 1500 to 2000 degree centigrade which is above the melting point of the material of the cylinder body and the head of the engine okay so basically we can understand that platinum which can be a metal which has one of the highest melting point it melts even at uh, 17000 degrees okay and uh, iron melts at 15000 aluminum at 657 degrees okay therefore if the heat is not dissipated it would result in the failure of the cylinder material okay second point due to very high temperatures the film in the of the lubricating oil will get oxidized thus producing the carbon deposits on the surface so this will result in a piston seizure now due to overheating also large temperature differences may lead to the distortion of the engine components due to the thermal stresses setup okay so this makes it necessary for the temperature variations to be kept at a minimum level fine and higher thermal temperatures are also lower the volumetric efficiency of the engine so the two main requirements which are killing the effectiveness or you can say effective cooling systems so which are these requirements it must be capable of removing at least 30 percent of the heat which are generated in the combustion chamber so too much removal of the heat will also lower the thermal efficiency so it should at least remove 30 percent of the energy or heat thereafter it should remove the heat at the fast rate when the engine is very hot okay so during the starting of the engine the cooling should be very slow because engine is not that hot okay so that the different working parts reach their optimum temperature or you can say op operating temperature in a short time so there are basically two types of cooling systems okay now which are these two types first one is air cooling system and the second one is liquid cooling system okay so now let's first discuss about the air cooling system so air cooling system is mostly found in a older cars in on, and in two wheelers okay so in air cool system it is uh, where the engine block is covered by the aluminium fins that conduct the heat away from the cylinder okay so a powerful fan forces the air over these fins so which the cools the engine by transferring the heat to the air now the amount of heat reduced by the air cooling depends upon the factor such as uh, which are the factors so the total area of the fin surface thereafter the velocity or you can say amount of cooling air thereafter also on the temperature of the fin as well as temperature of the cooling air okay so these are the main factors that should be considered during the air cooling system now air cooling is mostly used in a less horsepower or you can say small engines like scooter small cars or you can say aircraft engine okay where the forward motion of the machine gives good velocity to the cooling air to enter inside the engine okay or surrounding the engine so air cooling is also provided in some small industrial engines also okay so basically what are the basic advantages of the system so basically they are very cheaper to manufacture because uh, they need less care on and maintenance also okay there are the two advantages thereafter the design of the air cool engine is very simple because it doesn't have any jacket or water jacket they are lighter in weight than cooling system or you can say liquid cool system okay due to the absence of radiators circulating pump and the weight of the cooling water itself okay thereafter this system of the cooling 
particularly advantageous where there are extreme climate conditions in you can say arctic circle or where the evaporation factor of the liquid is very higher okay like in deserts so there is no risk of damage from the frost such as the cracking of the cylinder jackets or radiator water tubes okay so this was all about the air cooling system done now next system that is the liquid cooling system liquid cooling system so the liquid cooling systems are the one that are used the most in these days okay so in automotive with a liquid cooling system the heat is carried away by the use of a heat absorbing coolant that circulates through the engine okay especially around the combustion chamber in a cylinder head area okay of the engine block now the coolant is pumped through the engine then after absorbing the heat of the combustion it is circulated towards the radiator this is the path okay to radiator where the heat is transferred to the atmosphere okay now the cool liquid is then transferred back to the engine and this process repeats so engine radiator engine okay this cooling system has a basically four types okay so which are these four types one first is direct or you can say non return system thereafter thermo siphon system thereafter hopper system okay and thereafter pump circulation or you can say force circulation system okay so let's see all the systems one by one first one that is the direct or you can say non return water cooling system so this is very suitable for the large installations and where the plenty of water is available so the water from the storage tank is directly supplied to the engine the hot water is not cooled for the reuse but it is simply discarded or you can say discharge okay so the low hp engine coupled with the irrigation pump is an example you can say okay second is thermo siphon water cooling system what is that so in this system it works on the principle that the hot water being li uh, lighter rises up and cold water being heavier goes down simple so it is uh, the system in the radiator is placed at a higher level than the engine for the easy to flow condition of the water towards the engine okay so heat is conducted to the water jackets and from where it is taken away due to the convection by the circulating water in a radiator okay so as the water jackets become hot it rises to the top of the radiator now cold water from the radiator takes place as the rising water comes it will go down okay so the circulation of the water is set up in this system okay so this helps in keeping the engine at working condition next is hopper water system what is that so this also works on the same principle just like thermo siphon system okay as per the density principle so in this uh, in this there is a hopper on a jacket containing the water which surrounds the engine cylinder okay now in this system as soon as the water starts boiling it replaced by the cooling water or okay, cold water okay so an engine fitted with this system cannot run for the several hours without it being refilled with the water okay and the last one is a pump or you can say force circulation water cooling system so this system is actually very similar in a construction to the thermo siphon system except it makes the use of centrifugal pump to circulate the water okay so throughout the water jackets the radiator and you can say water jackets uh, the water flows from the lower portion of the radiator to the water jackets of the engine through the centrifugal pump okay it is pumping the cooling okay pumping water so after the circulation water comes back to the radiator it loses its heat by the process of radiation okay and this system is employed in a car or you can say trucks or uh, different vehicles or big vehicles okay so these are the basic cooling systems now we will discuss about the main parts okay so what are these main parts first is radiator pump radiator fan plumbing thereafter fluids thereafter thermostat valve thereafter temperature gauge thereafter hose pipe okay so these are the main uh, you can say uh, basic parts of the cooling system or water cooling system okay so in next session we will discuss about all these parts in very detail okay so this was it about the cooling system or you can say basics of cooling system what we have learned there are basically two types one is air cooling second is water cooling okay and we have discussed about the what are the different types of water cooling also so in next session we will discuss about the main components of the water cooling 
system done so see you in next session thank you so much